Wilfredo Prieto is like a Cuban artist. He's uh, this kind of uh, emerging, a little bit emerging generation of uh, contemporary Cuban arts. Uh, he's a little bit, most of the time he's described as sort of Baroque minimalist, which means that he uses like minimal imagery, but with a very uh, extended narrative power. So what you see is actually the very minimal objects, but the discourse around it is, um, is many times uh, very, very narrational and also very actually politic and also uh, very critical. Um, he's young, like I said, he's emerging. There is a sort of minimalist scenery in, in Cuba, which he had with, uh, with top guys like Silvio Mereles or with, uh, with, for example, Gabriel Orozco, who is also a friend of uh, Wilfredo. So, and he's a little bit kind of young emerging artist in this, uh, in this scenery. He studied painting in the uh, uh, Academy of Havana. And you see also in the show is one painting included, uh, which also says a, lot of his, uh, says a lot of his imagery now. So what you see in his painting, which he did when he was very young, 19, uh, the imagery that is in this painting is already emerging in his later work. He stopped quite early with painting and then he started like developing uh, these minimal objects. So he was like very quite young when he really started with his minimal imagery already. What we decided now for the show at SMAC is like because we follow him already for like uh, a decade or so. So we have a space here uh, called Art Now, which is a space for young artists. And we showed Wilfredo uh, with an in-situ installation here in 2008. So since then we really followed him. And then we decided a year ago that maybe it was a little bit time to make a sort of more extended view on his work or a sort of more extended monographical exhibition because of more or less two reasons. One, he had already two quite extended monographical exhibitions, one in Bicocca in Milan and one in uh, Dos de Mayo in uh, Madrid. But these two solo shows were more, more or less focused on other topics. The one in Madrid focused more or less on the emotive minimalism, which we can see in the objects, and the one in uh, and Garbi Coca in Milano was focusing more on like the monumental pieces that he made like only the last two, three years he's really busy with more monumental pieces. So he decided to focus on a, explicitly on the society critical aspect on his oeuvre. So many pieces that we chose in this retrospective wing have to do with, um, with society critical aspects of on contemporary uh, society which the focus there was lying that it was really striking to see that in many of his objects, you see a sort of, they are very ephemeral, like I said, they are very minimalistical, but to achieve this minimal output, you have to put in an extreme, extreme, um, what do you call it? Extreme amount of energy, extreme amount of uh, um, productive energy for this minimal output. So in this sense, you can link this with really contemporary discourses like energy waste, like Overconsumerism, like hypercapitalism, like so. In this sense, we had a sort of we found in this angle we found a sort of broader society scope to show his minimal pieces in. It's not um, explicitly political. He says it also, like for, for him, his, 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 his use of material, and of course he takes, he takes his, his, uh, his practice and ex his experience from his home, homeland, Cuba, he takes it with him. So, so for, it, for him, it's a logic that sometimes this work gets political, but it's not, a, it's not the first intention. The first intention is to see like, okay, what is the object? What do you see as a viewer? And do you believe that there is a discourse behind this. Can you believe it, that it is? So he is, is more playing with like, the belief of the viewer than with the whole, topic, uh, the whole political topic, which doesn't mean that he's not in it, because it's a logic that it's in it, but it's not that he's like 
how do you call it, waving the finger constantly, like uh, you have to look at this and, and, and try to, it's, it's not moralistical. So it is actually a sort of first show of Filfredo Prieto that thinks in the retrospective way. And that's why we decided, together with two other institutions, to make his first monographical overviewing publication. So it's not an exhibition catalogue, but it's really the first monograph of his work since 95, since he started actually, and uh, he graduated at the Academy, until now. So the two institutions that work with that is Kunstram Braunschweig in Germany, who is going to do uh, have the next venue of this show, and then uh, Museo de Bellas Artes in Habana, who is going to also have a monographical show on his work, on Wilfredo's work, uh, during the Havana Biennale, which will be next May. So these institutions, uh, together with the galleries of course, and uh, private sponsoring, joined forces to make this first monographical uh, publication of his work, which will be published in uh, two weeks. It would be uh, published by Mus. Mus most publishers in Milano and also distributed internationally by them. So I think that's quite important to, as an annex on this retrospective idea of the show, that we publish also this catalog. The piece is called Much Ado About Nothing, so it's uh, after the play of uh, Shakespeare. And at the entrance of SMAC, there you will see like two gigantic trucks. One is a gigantic water tanker, the other is a gigantic electric generator driven by uh, diesel. And they're making lots of noise and they produce actually lots of water and lots of electricity. And then the tubes go through the exhibition space uh, to the last space, which we are in now and give a little bit light and a little bit of water for a, a little plant. So in this sense, you have actually, this piece is actually uh, embracing the whole exhibition concept. So you have like the extreme energy, energy inputs for extreme spartanistical minimal outputs, which then, if you want, according to Prieto, the ecological discourse or the hypercapitalism or, or the overconsumerism or and so on.